Hello everyone, this is Tony from Sack Studios, and it's getting that time of year again, getting real close to Halloween, so I thought we could have a little fun, and I'm going to show you how to make a jack-o'-lantern in Photoshop. So now that we have our pumpkin open, the first thing to do is darken everything around it just a little bit. So I would recommend we go over to our panel over here, to our palette. We're going to grab our burn tool. We're going to have our brush set roughly to about a hundred and we're just going to go ahead and darken around the pumpkin. Alright, so now that we have darkened the photo up a little bit, we're going to go ahead and make a new layer and we're going to call this layer Mouth. All right. Now we have our mouth layer. We're going to go over here to our tool palette and we're going to grab the polygonal lasso tool. And we're just going to start about right here and we're going to draw ourselves a mouth. And feel free to do this however you like it. I'm just going to draw a pretty basic mouth that you would see on a jack-o'-lantern normally. And you can have fun with it, do things have all kinds of crazy stuff whatever you like to do the most completely up to you and I'd like to go ahead and say that some of these values that we're going to be working with um, might be different if you change up the design a little bit but that's not a problem you know you just go ahead and adjust it to however you like it you may need to tweak some of the numbers but that's not a problem either so now that we have our mouth drawn we have our new layer selected we're going to make sure we have the black color selected. We're just going to grab our fill bucket and we're just going to fill that in with black. Now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and add on a ripple effect. So up under filter, we're going to go down to distort and then ripple. Now in the settings, we're going to choose about negative 20 for the percentage on the amount and we want to set the size to large. Go ahead and say OK. Alright, now you can deselect the mouth and you see we've got the beginnings of a mouth here and that's looking pretty good so far. So now we're going to go ahead and adjust some layer styles. So we're going to go up to the top menu under layer, go down to layer style and then we're going to choose gradient overlay right here. Alright, now uh, we've got our gradient overlay inside and I know it's black and white. It looks a little weird right now, but we're going to make some adjustments that tweak it. So let's go ahead and start by clicking on our gradient overlay tab there. As you see, you just clicked on that, brought up the editor. And we're going to start with the left side. We're going to go ahead and you use kind of a, a bright orange to begin with. Um, I find the value of F D A D 12 works pretty well. Okay, just going to go ahead and choose OK. And now for the right side on the the highlights, we're actually going to want a darker orange for that. So we're going to go with nine eight five one zero two. And as you can see now, we've started getting a more of an inner darker glow orange that you would see inside of a jack-o'-lantern if you cut it normally. So now with our color selected, let's go ahead and choose OK. We're going to go ahead and change the style to radial. And as you can see, it emits from the center, making it look even more realistic. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and choose on the angle. We're going to go ahead and choose zero degrees. All right. Now that we've set it to zero degrees, let's go ahead and make sure our scale is set to 100 percent. And that looks pretty good now at this point. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag our gradient upward just a little bit because normally the glow would come more from the center. So we're just going to grab with our mouse and click and just drag it up a little bit to make it look more natural. That looks pretty good right there. Now that uh, we've got our gradient set, let's go ahead and throw in an inner shadow. 
and when we click on inner shadow we're gonna have some options here we're gonna go ahead and change the blending mode for this to color burn and then we're gonna go ahead and click over here and set a color too now for this color I found that we want um, a38202 so a38202 and that gives us a, a kind of a little darker orange inside there and that's looking good also so now let's go ahead and change the opacity let's bring that down to about 28 percent roughly alright I'm pretty happy with that now we're gonna go ahead and uncheck global light and we want to set the angle to about 90 degrees and I'll show you why shortly because when we adjust the distance and size you're going to see the inner carvings come to life and it's going to really start looking like a carved jack-o-lantern so once we've done that we're going to go ahead and set the distance to about nine pixels then we're going to go ahead and set the choke to uh, let's say all the way to 100 see how that looks okay and the size we're just gonna go ahead and say zero on that now depending on how you want yours to look we use the angle of 90 degrees and that gives us a look like we're looking at it kind of from the bottom looking up now what we can do is change to negative 90 degrees and that puts that on the bottom which I think looks just a little bit better in this situation but you play with it you do it however you like it it's your creation and ultimately you're the one that will be happy with it so now that we've got that set let's go ahead and throw in a bevel and emboss so we're gonna start off by changing the style to emboss alright and we want the direction to go down Right, that matches the area down here that we set to look like a carving. So now we're going to again uncheck global light and let's go ahead and set the angle to about 95 degrees. The altitude can be about 25 degrees. We're going to go down and change our highlight mode to overlay. All right, and then we're going to adjust the opacity for that to oh roughly let's say 45 percent okay all right and then we're gonna go down to shadow mode and we want it set to multiply but let's move the opacity down to about 40 percent on that all right we're looking pretty good now so we're moving along and now let's throw in an inner glow so the options we're going to choose for the inner glow the blend mode is going to be set to linear dodge okay and once we set to linear dodge we're going to actually alter the color too so we're going to click here and bring up our color picker and for the color let's go with 985102 alright let's go ahead and choose OK now let's go ahead and set the size to around 35 and the range let's go with 75 see how that looks yeah that's looking pretty good so then let's jump into an outer glow alright and with the outer glow we're just going to change the opacity to about 30 Okay, and we're going to move the range. We're going to move it up all the way to 100. And I'm pretty happy with that. I think that looks quite good. Um, so at this point, um, I would recommend going back, checking everything to make sure this is the way you want it. If you, if you want to go back, you can click on the gradient overlay and then drag up and down to get the glow however you would like it so 
we'll make that adjustment now okay looks good and choose OK now we need to do the eyes and the nose well now we've already done all the hard work this is the easy part so we're gonna go back to our polygonal lasso tool that's a tongue twister there alright so then we're just gonna draw out some eyes so we're just gonna start out draw some nice triangular eyes that look good Okay. alright so there's our first eye let's go ahead and create a new layer and we're gonna name that I one so it's gonna be our first eye so with I one selected we're gonna make sure we have our black color selected come up here and grab our paint bucket tool and we're just gonna fill inside there just like that now let's go up and we're gonna deselect that so now we just have the black inside there and now comes the easy part with the trick I was talking about let's go back down to mouth and let's right click on that layer and let's choose copy layer style let's go back up to eye and we're gonna go ahead and right click and paste layer style and as you can see it, it copies all the layer styles and settings we previously set for the mouth to the eye which I think looks pretty good now you can change if you want you can change the way the bevel works by double clicking on here and not sure what that was but alright so we're gonna go ahead and double click here bring this up and for the bevel and emboss you can change the degree if you like or the inner shadow most people choose inner shadow you could say 132 and then you'll see you know how that changes there but I'm gonna leave it as it is for now and leave that on the bottom and then what we're gonna do is go to our I1 layer and we're gonna duplicate that layer go ahead and name that I2 Okay, and we're gonna grab it and we're just gonna drag it over like so want it to be about even with the other and now we have our eye alright one last step here to get our face complete we're gonna go ahead and duplicate that layer one more time and we're gonna name this nose okay and we're gonna grab it drag it to the middle and it looks awfully big so let's go ahead and hit control T to bring up our transformation box and we're just going to hold shift and grab a corner and we're gonna just drag it down a little bit that looks good and let's apply that let's drag it to the middle and there we have our jack-o-lantern nice and spooky now the last thing I would recommend is we go ahead and hit control alt shift and the letter E and that's going to merge into everything we've done into one layer and with that layer selected let's go ahead and add an adjustment layer change the levels okay so for the shadows let's go with 63 for the midtones we're gonna go with 0.87 and finally for the highlights let's go with 253 alright so that's looking pretty good and once we zoom out we have our jack-o-lantern finished and complete and it looks nice and spooky and like I said before you can mess with these settings change the values play with it go crazy because ultimately it's your project and I want you to be happy with it. So thanks for joining me for this tutorial. I hope you'll check in for future videos. And this is Tony from Sack Studios. Thanks for stopping by.